we'll be back here in Shanxi to celebrate our faith over here in God's country, Champlain Valley home. My sisters and brothers, it's a, always, always a great privilege to be able to come into a sacred space such as this, to be nourished by the word and by the sacrament. A time for us to appreciate what it means to be a family of faith. We know sometimes living out that faith we stumble when we fall. We don't act like a family. Well, we act like a dysfunctional family sometimes. But we know that whenever we approach the altar, our God is there to nourish us. So for a moment now, we ask God for his pardon for his people. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to the people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy God and Son, Lord God, Man of God, Son of the Father, you take away You take away the sins of the world. You receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Like the 
changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. harvest. 
He asked himself, what shall I do? I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. The things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise even affecting Olympic athlete participation down in Rio, where it's a huge issue. Now even we're hearing it in Florida, a state or so. Now, we don't, we don't usually talk about spiritual epidemics, but a word has been coined to describe a contemporary epidemic that has well, it's afflicted our souls. The phenomenon, which I suspect you've heard about, is known as affluenza. It's an epidemic that affects our spiritual health. Affluenza has been rampant in the United States for some time, but has also spread to other developed countries in Europe and in the Far East. The symptoms of affluenza are the compulsion and pressure we feel to acquire stuff at the expense of our spiritual well-being. We believe that more and more and more and bigger and bigger are deaths. Now this is surely not something new, as the author of our first reading reminds us, as does St. Paul in our second reading, and Jesus in our Gospel. These pieces of wisdom and warnings were necessary for people to hear over the ages. But the temptation to which they were addressed has never reached epidemic proportions like today. Never before could we so accurately identify a society as a consumer society as we can today. This is true because never before has it been possible to produce the proliferation of possessions as is possible today. And here are some of the symptoms of the disease. Our annual production of solid waste would literally fill a convoy of garbage trucks stretching halfway to the moon. We have twice as many shopping centers as high schools. 40% of our lakes and streams are too polluted for swimming or fishing. 40%. Our CEOs now earn 400 times as much as our average workers. 
Since 1950, we Americans have used up more resources than anyone who has ever lived on earth before that. The average size of new homes is now more than double what they were in the 1950s, while our, our average family size has shrunk significantly. We spend more money on restaurant food than on food that we cook at home. Sobering examples, and yet they are only the tip of the thermometer that registers our feverish pursuit of stuff. And if one more proof is needed for the prevalence of affluenza, it might be the fact that there are now more than 30,000 self-storage facilities in the country, offering over a billion square feet of relief for people who need extra space to store their stuff. The epidemic we call affluenza is rampant chiefly for one reason. The media has convinced us that what are in fact luxuries have become necessities for us. The media has convinced us that our lives simply cannot be complete and enjoyable unless we continue to acquire the stuff that fills the aisles of the stores or websites. We identify ourselves with our possessions. When we reflect how much energy it takes to live faithfully the gospel of consumerism, we readily become aware of the fact that soon our possessions possess us. We literally live for them. We just have to have them. And so much of the world resents us for this. Little Susie went with her mother to a country general store. After her mother had made a large purchase, the store owner invited Susie to help herself to a handful of candy. But the child held back. What's wrong? Don't you like candy? The owner asked. Little Susie said, yes, I like the candy. Then the man put his hand into the candy jar and dropped a very generous portion into the little girl's cupped hands. Later, Susie's mother asked her daughter why she had not taken the candy when it was first offered. Susie explained, because, because I knew his hand was bigger than mine. <laughs> more, more is always better. I want the double beef whopper with cheese. I want the king size coat with extra large fries. And I want, personally speaking, the large size ice cream cone. When it comes to fulfilling our every want, there may be times when it seems that God's hands is, well, frankly, too small. Yet when it comes to fulfilling our genuine need, He's got the whole world in His hands. My sisters and brothers, readings like today sometimes touch a nerve with us, myself included. But we must not lose awareness of the fact that it is not what we have in life, but who we are that counts. Jesus, the source of all wisdom, is the only one who can satisfy the human heart. The rich man in today's familiar parable lacked the common sense to realize that the best things in life are not things at all. 
but he was not the last to succumb to affluenza. Jesus tells us that this is the way it will be for all who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. Do you suffer from affluenza? How do you plan to treat it? If my world is so full of stuff, there's very little room for God. The stuff gets in my way of seeing what necessities the rest of the world goes without. A U-Haul with all my possessions in it, will not accompany me to my burial. Let each of us be rich in what matters to God. May God be praised forever. May God be praised. Together, we protest the faith. I believe in God. Always through 
Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Pray now that my sacrifice is yours, may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. In your sacrifice of your dreams, the praise of the Lord is seen, for our good and the knowledge of Jesus. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he breaks it and gives it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom
pastoral needs here at, at Sacred Heart. That's why I sent you a, a wonderful, wonderful pastoral priest, Father, uh, Father Ted. As you know, he's a wonderful, wonderful preacher, and you are in uh, very, very fine hands. And so, uh, in anticipation of this installation, I want to congratulate Father Ted and, and assure him of the prayers and support of this, the parish family of Sacred Heart. Bishop for taking time out of his very busy schedule, moving around the diocese and in parts beyond to come and celebrate the Eucharist with us today. Uh, as the Bishop already knows, uh, I discovered that Sacred Heart and Shea Z is very, is very much alive. It's a very vibrant and welcoming parish and I thank you for your warm welcome over the last uh, 30 days or so. The Bishop talked in his homily about obsession with stuff. Now, there's nothing to cure a problem like the hair of the dog. So, over next door in the yard sale, everything is half off. <laughs> so come over, I don't want to try to, you know, be some kind of enabler, but... Um, <laughs> and the Michigan's bishop are gone, so you're out of luck with that. Michigan's but back your car up, we'll fill it up with stuff to take back home. <laughs> that, that was no real idea that much. <laughs> my mother has a yard sale going on right now. <laughs> Thanks to everyone who answered our plea for flowers. Last week I asked if people could provide flowers to the Mother of God, and you have. As I said last week, one of the greatest ways to draw down the blessings of God upon a parish is by devotion to God's mother. Put yourself in his place. How much you love your mothers and how it touches your hearts when someone does them the smallest kindness. Think about how God, with his sacred heart, God who loves, Jesus who loves with the heart of God. Imagine how touched his sacred heart is when we honor his mother. So thank you for bringing flowers to our blessed mother. I also mentioned last week, no one has delivered on this yet, but I also mentioned the one way to draw down God's blessing upon a parish is to bring the pastor cookies. <laughs> No one has answered that plea yet, <laughs> but it's a whole new week. <laughs> but you answered the pleas in the correct order. First Mary, and then me. <laughs> God bless you all. May Mary keep you in her care and love always. And uh, please come over to the yard sale next door. Everything's half off, half off. The hair of the dog. <laughs> Chocolate chip cookies, Father? Yes. <laughs> You're in good hands. <laughs> Big hands. <laughs> also, um, certainly Father so right in his comments about the vitality of the parish. And a sign of the viability of the parish, the vitality of the parish, indeed, the viability of the diocese, the vitality of the diocese is how we understand what it means to be a member of the diocesan family. We have an extremely important event taking place in late class on September 25th, in spite of vocation summit. Uh, I've asked all of the pastors to modify their parish weekend mass schedules so that you will be able to join us uh, for that day uh, over in late class. A couple of years ago, during the year of faith, that wonderful experience. And so I'm really counting on the folks here in Shay Z as well as West Shay Z and in all of our parishes to engage as a member of the diocesan family. And uh, check it off. We hope you already have it checked off in your calendar now. Uh, no other things going on that day. Uh, to join us in Lake Placid at the Olympic Arena for a wonderful, wonderful experience what it means to be church as we seek to build up 
the culture of vocations, the culture of the church here in the North Country. So again, that's September 25th. Hope to see you there. Lastly, I just want to thank uh, wonderful musicians. Do you go on the road? <laughs> thank you. And wonderful altar servers for the great job that they, uh, that they do here at, at Sacred Heart. I'm very, very appreciative of your, your assistance at the altar. And as always, it's great. It seems like the members in town, uh, hometown cable is here and then the Calvin's I certainly appreciate his presence here. For those who can't be with us physically, but they're with us via the airwaves, so thank you, Calvin. The Lord be with you all. Now, Almighty God, bless you all. God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Brandon. That's been a great day, everybody. Thank you. Our final hymn is Lead Me, Lord. 6.36.